In this tutorial we're going to introduce the basic workings of ResiPy. ResiPy is built around four codes for modeling DC resistivity and IP. R2 models 2D resistivity, R3T models 3D resistivity, CR2 models 2D IP and CR3T models 3D IP. What we're going to do in this tutorial is just look at some synthetic forward modeling and inverse modeling just to get some familiarity with the basic workings of ResiPy. So we start, uh, we're going to specify a forward model here in 2D and the first thing we do is we need to generate the electrode array. So we go to the electrodes tab here and we're going to have 48 electrodes five meter spacing and we can generate this so we have labels 1 to 48 x coordinates z coordinates which is the elevation and this buried uh, column is each of these boxes is checked if the electrodes are beneath the surface in this case we're working with a surface array so we'll leave those unchecked we then go to mesh we can generate a mesh, a quadrilateral mesh, or we could generate a triangular mesh. Triangular meshes are computationally much more efficient and much more flexible in terms of mapping geometry of our electrodes, elevations, for example, or features if we want to add features within the, within the model. We can use these options here to create polygons, rectangles or lines. Um, to add features in here for forward modeling and so for example if I added a rectangle left click and then when I get to the end I right click now what happens here is that the the region that's mapped on the element mesh um, tries to mimic the object that I've added there if I select another one you can see here how the boundaries are not perfect so if I want perfect geometry on there I go to design model before meshing so I could add a polygon I left click right click to finish I could add a rectangle and then I go triangular mesh and now we see that the the features themselves the geometry is mapped perfectly into the mesh so what we're going to do is we're going to create two rectangular features in this uh, uh, region we're going to mesh this and then we're going to specify a resistivity for these zones so I've got three regions here region one the object on the left region 2 the object on the right and then the the rest of the mesh is region 3 so I'm gonna make the left anomaly 10 ohm meters and the right anomaly at a thousand ohm meters and leave the background at 100 ohm meters we'll discuss zones later but at the moment we're just creating the resistivity structure for forward modeling we now select the forward model tab and we can add a sequence to this it defaults to a dipole dipole array with an a spacing of one and n goes from one to eight i can change this and i can i can add other sequences so for example i might want to add a uh, a vena sequence with a as one i might want to add another one vena a is two and so on I'm just going to keep it nice and simple here. I'm going to use an A of 2, which in this case is 10 meters, and N goes from 1 to 8. So now I can select the forward modeling tab, and note here that I can specify a noise to add to the forward model data. This is useful then for inverse modeling to see how well our inversion matches the synthetic model 
given a realistic amount of noise in the data. So I generate the forward model. It's going to be 280 quadrupoles here. And now I get my pseudo section, which I can contour if I like. Um, and now I, I want to run an inversion of these data. So I can go to inversion setting. And I usually don't have to change much in here except the A weight and B weight. These are the noise levels that are set in the inversion. This is telling the inversion how noisy the data are. Now I know in this case that the noise has 2%, the noise is 2%. So that is equivalent to a B weight of 0.02 and an A weight, which is the offset error, of zero. So if I specify these and then go to inversion and now select invert, R2 runs using the forward model data. My initial misfit is around about 50. And then what R2 tries to do is to minimize that misfit. It searches through different smoothing parameters, regularization parameters, and it runs iteratively until the misfit equals one. That's equivalent to a chi-squared of, of one. So it's running now on the third iteration and it looks as though it's gonna finish on that iteration. It's got to a misfit of one, and now I can see the results. The, the, the default uh, visualization is to show the sensitivity overlay. I'm gonna switch this off, and I'm gonna change my color scheme to the jet color scheme. And I, now I can see my resistivity in the region, which matches well my my forward model and in fact i can look here what my forward model was this is the forward model that was used it's not the starting model of the inversion it's the forward model that was used and then this is the inversion i can change my display settings so if i want to modify the vertical extent that i'm looking at here change that to minus 40 and then I can see my, my region here. Um, I can show my mesh if I want. Now, one thing that's important here is that you see that the mesh that's used is exactly the same mesh that was, that was adopted for the forward modeling. Now, strictly speaking, there's bias there because it's actually enforcing the structure that, I, that actually exists with my anomalies. So I could go back and change my mesh. So if I go to mesh, and I'll go design model before mesh in triangular mesh. So now I have no object recognition in there and run my inversion, select log and invert. Then this runs through as before And it, and it should run through the same number of iterations because I haven't changed the mesh that much. So we've got three iterations. And now we see that the mesh is a unbiased mesh. It does not map the objects that, that exist in there. I'm plotting here log 10 resistivity. I can change this to to resistivity or I can change this to conductivity to highlight particular parts of my uh, of my my region. I can also show the sensitivity map which which highlights the areas of higher sensitivity and lower sensitivity and we see in this case that the high conductivity region on the left enhances the sensitivity and the low resistivity on the right reduces some of this sensitivity. So these have implications on the um, uh, the, res the sensitivity of our measurements to particular features within uh, within the region. In subsequent tutorials, we're going to look at uh, more advanced settings with the inversion, and also run through some examples of field data to show how we can apply the same kind of approach to analyzing field data in 2D and 3D and also IP and time lapse.